Early in the morning of April 14th, 2018, two sinister black jets took off from Al Udeed Air Base in Qatar. The huge B-1B Lancer bombers, nicknamed Bones, were distinguished by the sinuous profile of their fuselage, designed in the 1970s to reduce observability on the radar. However, the B-1 stealth characteristics rapidly proved obsolescent due to advancements in radar technology. Indeed, a lone Marine Corps EA-6B Prowler jet joined the two-ship element of the 34th Bomber Squadron likely to provide radar jamming support. The four-engine jet streaked towards the Syrian capital of Damascus, over a thousand miles northwest dispatched by Washington to punish the Syrian government for an apparent chemical weapon attack on a rebel-held community on April 4th. However, Syrian airspace is protected by an extensive integrated air defense network of radars and surface-to-air missile batteries. Furthermore, the Russian military had deployed more sophisticated and longer-range Russian S-400 and S-300 V-4 surface-to-air missiles that could potentially intervene. Even with their modestly reduced radar cross-section and jamming support, the bones were at risk of being detected if they got too close. So the bomber's four-person crews instead used a different ploy. Likely around 200 miles away from their target, the B-1s released 19 AGM-158A Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missiles JASM, from their bomb bays. As the weapons plummeted to the earth, their eight-foot-wide wings flipped out and turbojet engines sputtered to life. The four-meter-long missiles leveled off a few dozen meters above the ground and streaked towards their target at roughly the speed of a typical jetliner following a flight path programmed to loop around elevated terrain and enemy radars. While using a jam-resistant GPS and an inertial navigation system to avoid straying off course. As they made their final approach on the target, an integrated infrared seeker matched the building's profile to its onboard 3D model and adjusted the missile's trajectory, giving them the accuracy to land within a 3-meter radius more than half the time. In the space of two minutes, starting at 4 a.m., all 19 2,250-pound missiles struck the Barza Research and Development Center just outside the heavily defended airspace of Damascus. Their 1,000-pound WDU-42 penetrator fragmentation warheads piercing through roofs of the target buildings before detonating. An additional 57 Tomahawk cruise missiles launched by surface warships and the Virginia-class submarine John Warner contributed to the onslaught. Western intelligence agencies had identified the center as one used by the Syrian Scientific Studies and Research Center for the development and production of chemical weapons. The Syrian government claims otherwise, citing a November 2017 inspection by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons that did not note the presence of chemical weapons. The three buildings that made up the center were obliterated Indeed, the dozens of missiles were likely overkill intended to inflate the size of the strike compared to the 2017 attack to signal escalating resolve. No lives were reported lost, however, as the building had been evacuated in anticipation of a possible attack. Even if the firepower employed was excessive, the strike remains notable for being the first combat employment of the JASM, a system intended to play a key role in U.S. military strategy in coming decades. Cruise Missiles with Stealth Technology Back in the 1990s, the Air Force decided it wanted a standoff stealth cruise missile with a reduced radar cross-section. Lockheed Martin's AGM-158 prototype was selected in a 1998 competition, but the program experienced numerous failures in the subsequent decade. Finally, in 2009, a revised design succeeded in 15 out of 16 tests, and the weapon finally began production. The basic AGM-158A model deployed in Syria uses a J402 turbojet engine and has a range of 230 miles. However, the AGM-158B JASM Extended Range model, though identical in dimensions and 70% of the components, more than doubles its reach to 620 miles, 
thanks to a more fuel-efficient F107 turbofan engine and additional fuel storage. The upgrade increases the price from $800,000 to over $1.3 million, however. A maximum of 24 JASMs can be mounted in internal rotary launchers on a single B-1B, 16 inside a B-2 stealth bomber, and 12 or 20 on a B-52H. Smaller F-15E, F-16, and F-A-18 fighter jets can carry one or two, and it's expected that the F-35 Lightning II will be certified to carry them externally, although it won't be especially stealthy when doing so. The missile is also in service with Finland and Australia, mounted on F-A-18 Hornets, and Poland, carried by F-16s. The Navy is also deploying a modified AGM-158C anti-ship version known as the Long Range Anti-Ship Missile, LRASM, which may finally replace the aging Harpoon missile on surface warships and Super Hornet fighters. The JASM missile allows the U.S. military to deliver highly precise surprise attacks against targets already well protected by enemy air defenses. Indeed, enemy air defense radars and missile batteries would likely be one of their chief targets in the opening phases of conflict, paving the way for additional attacks by more vulnerable fourth-generation jets using cheaper, shorter-range weapons. AGM-158s might also be used for strikes on well-defended high-value targets such as headquarters, missile silos, power and communication centers, and fuel and weapons depots. The Air Force is also looking to exploit the JASM ER's stealthy, long-endurance characteristics for other roles. In March 2016, Lockheed Martin began analysis on an enhanced wing design to further increase range. In September 2018, the corporation was awarded a contract to develop an extreme range variant of the AGM-158. The weapon would weigh about 2,300 kilograms, 5,000 pounds, and deliver a 910 kilogram, 2,000 pound warhead out to a range of 1,900 kilometers. Originally called the JASM XR and later designated the AGM-158B2, it features a new missile control unit, changes to the wings, a different paint coating, an electronic safe and arm fuse, secure GPS receiver, and program protection requirements at a unit cost of $1.5 million. As formidable long-range anti-aircraft and anti-ship missiles capable of threatening entire regions proliferate across the globe, the JASM would serve as an opening gambit to help U.S. aircraft defang those threats from a safe distance. The Anti-Access Area Denial Problem China and Russia have both begun deploying long-range missiles that can threaten access to huge swaths of airspace or large spans of international waters. Such anti-access area denial weapons include the Chinese DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile, a ground-based weapon that can threaten aircraft carriers at a greater distance than the combat radius of the carrier's onboard attack jets, and the S-400 surface-to-air missile system, which can shoot long-range 40 and 6 missiles at targets up to 250 miles away. The Russian S-400 battery deployed in Latakia, Syria, can theoretically threaten the airspace directly above the British Air Base in Akrotiri, Cyprus, and the U.S. Air Base in Incirlik, Turkey. While stealth aircraft can potentially infiltrate an air defense system and attempt to take out such weapons, they're still at risk of eventual detection by low-bandwidth radars, infrared sensors, and even high-bandwidth engagement radars at short distances. Therefore, it's desirable to find a means to strike at such anti-access systems from standoff range beyond the adversary's ability to retaliate. Since the 1990s, the United States has made extensive use of Tomahawk cruise missiles, which can strike targets up to hundreds of miles away. But the Tomahawk's more observable on radar and can be shot down, though Syrian air defenses do not appear to have had much success shooting down Tomahawks in both U.S. strikes in 2017 and 2018. Grandiose claims of shooting down 76 missiles to the contrary, a more capable adversary might do better.